Alyssa. Happy Monday. Today I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to show you how to use rhinestones and how to make uh, rhinestone decals so you can put on your shirt, a rhinestone transfer, or excuse me, a rhinestone decal transfer so you can put on your shirt. Uh, you can also use the same kind of tips and tricks um, if you're making other kind of rhinestone decals. So um, the very basics of how to create a rhinestone design or how to use one that you import into Silhouette Studio is actually today's new blog post on Silhouette School. So the link to that is up top. Um, so basically, it, first of all, I you are going to use a couple of things. You need this, which is rhinestone flock. You can get in a, it's a couple different colors. There's pink, there's blue, I think there's definitely black. Um, so you need the rhinestone uh, um, flock, okay? This is like a thick material here. It's kind of fuzzy. And what it allows you to do is, it is how you are gonna create the template for your rhinestones. And you can make all kinds of things. You can see that the rhinestone holes are there and then you fill that with um, the stones and we'll take it from there. The reason that I'm not going to cut today is because as you can imagine, cutting this many um, rhinestone, gosh, the glare there, sorry about that. Cutting this many just takes quite a bit of time. So we've already done that. Um, I've already cut it. These are templates that I've cut, you know, in some cases like more than a year ago. You can use them over and over again. Um, so it's a really good, once you, once you create it, you can save them and save time later. Now, one thing that I do want to point out, if you're wondering, like I've never done rhinestones before, the link up top goes to today's blog post, which literally will take you from start to finish. So like drawing a shape in Silhouette Studio with the flexi shapes, turning it into a rhinestone shape and then cutting it and then transfer. Okay. So all that part is on the blog. As you know, the in-studio stuff is very difficult for me to do on these Facebook Lives. So we are going to pick it up with after the rhinestones are cut. Okay, so essentially what you're going to do, you once it comes out of your cutting machine, it's going to look like this. And then once it's cut, this one's, I, I what you'll do is you'll peel away and it's going to leave the dots behind, and then you have the template here. This is like this is where the rhinestones are gonna fall through, okay? So I'm not gonna take that one off of there yet. All right, what we are gonna do, as I said, is use one of these templates that I have already um, cut and weeded because it does take a little bit of time. So what we're gonna do now is fill this with rhinestones. I'm gonna pull you guys a little bit closer so you can see what we're doing here and show you exactly um, some tricks for how to do this. So first of all, I've actually already created um, one. This one is actually gradient. I did this rhinestone um, decal transfer, excuse me, with gradient rhinestones. And I have a blog post coming up on how to make the gradient, but let's just do basics today, okay? All right, so we're gonna, I like to work, excuse me, on a kind of a cutting mat just to keep my template in place. Then you're gonna take your rhinestones and you're just gonna dump them um, on top. Now let me find, I keep all my rhinestones in an old um, spice rack. Just find one that kind of matches here. Okay, well I'm actually gonna use this. So the first thing, you wanna make sure that when you're cutting them that the size rhinestone hole that you pick is the same size as the rhinestones that you actually are working with. So you, it'll say right on there, like this is a size 10 um, SS. That's the rhinestone size, okay? So then, rhinestones to me are like glitter, like they get everywhere. But I've got a couple tricks to show you for how to kind of corral them. All right, so literally, you're gonna dump a pile of rhinestones on your template, okay? So I'm gonna put the, I like to keep them in the bag, in the container, rather than dealing with the bag. Okay, so I'm gonna dump a pile right here onto my template. Then you're gonna take one of these brushes, this is like just a paint brush, and you're gonna go in kind of a circular motion, okay, around your design. You're just gonna push the rhinestones all around. Now some people don't like working on a cutting mat. This is a mat that I don't actually cut on anymore. It's just one that I use, you know, to hold things in place. Now as you can see, What's happening is this brush, it's like 
magical. I don't even understand how this works, but pretty much 95% of your rhinestones will end up correct. They won't be flipped the wrong way. If you use one of these brushes, it's like the craziest thing, okay? All right, so I just brush my rhinestones across my whole template, okay? And then I'm gonna go over here because I need this part too, okay? And then when I'm done, I'm gonna pull them all, all the rest of the rhinestones to the side. You'll see, I'm gonna pull them back into a pile on this far side. You might need to use your scraper. Okay, so this is actually a two-part um, deep uh, transfer. We've got the middle of the flower, and then I have a couple that are missing here, so I'm just gonna... Okay, so if any are missing, then you can just take like your tweezers and place those in. But like, as you can see, most of them end up falling right into the holes and they fall correctly. Like they're not flipped the wrong way, okay? All right, now, see why this is like glitter? It's like a giant mess, but we're gonna clean that up too. And I'm not gonna like try to scoop them in my hand. I have this little rhinestone scooper. This is, I got this a long time ago from the rhinestone world. And it's supposed to have, the handle is hollow. And so you put them in here and it's supposed to have a plug on the back, which I lost. And then I just dump them back into my container. Okay, so I got most of them up. Now, what I'm gonna do, I need to take my tweezers, or I don't have tweezers close, oh yes I do. So I'm gonna take some tweezers, and I'm just gonna, the ones that are missing stones, I'm just gonna take those, these are like those eyelash tweezers. Okay, um, so I'm gonna place those in there, any that are missing, all right. You can see why you don't wanna do this all manually. Like that would be way too much work. Okay, now my, I'm gonna get this um, cutting mat out of the way and we'll clean the rest of those up later, but you wanna be really careful. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is you need rhinestone transfer tape. Okay, so that's gonna pick up the rhinestone. So th this is the special tape that you need, rhinestone transfer. It's two, it's first of all, it is, um, heat resistant or heat safe, I guess, which you want because you are going to put this on your heat press. All right, so now I need to cut it so it's like not too, too big. Okay, all right, and it's two layers. Okay, so I'm gonna peel this apart. One has the liner and one is the sticky part. Why can't I? Get it apart. Oh my gosh. It's okay. So, what you're going to do is I like to place it down like a hinge and oh boy. Okay. You, make, you need to make sure that it covers your entire design which mine was looking like it wasn't gonna get that one side. Okay, okay, you're gonna put it down. Okay, now you can just press around if you want, or you can use your, press this again. Okay, I missed a couple on that side. I need to add a little extra piece here because I missed a small little section, like three rhinestones on that far side. So I'm just gonna peel an extra piece. Gosh, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with this today. Okay, just overlap it. All right, then we're just gonna pull the transfer tape back up. So this is just like when you're doing transfer with vinyl. You see what's happening? Okay. And this is how, whoops, you see I missed one there, so just push back down. Okay, this is the piece that I am then going to use on my shirt, okay? So I have a couple of extra rhinestones over here that I don't need. So I'm just gonna trim that off. You gotta be careful. 
this stuff obviously is sticky and the rhinestones are kind of just on there temporarily. Okay, so then you're gonna take your shirt or whatever it is that you're using. I'm gonna just put more on this this um, this pillow cover that I have, all right? And you're gonna place it on there. You wanna make sure that your heat press has been warmed up. Okay, so your heat press, now you're gonna turn this over. Your heat press needs to be at about 330 degrees for about 20 seconds, okay? All right, so let's move over here to the heat press, okay? I'm gonna put down a pressing pillow, all right? I'm gonna make sure it's not too, yeah, you don't want too much pressure because if you have too much pressure, then the glue comes out from around your rhinestones, okay? So see how I have here? All right, now I'm gonna put this on my heat press. Okay, and I'm going to cover and press down, 20 seconds, okay? So when the 20 seconds is up, then I'm gonna move, take that transfer tape off of there. Now I'm gonna pull this piece that I have the middle part of the flower. We'll do that next here. We would should be able to use the same piece of transfer, but just so I can get this prepped real quick, I'm gonna, okay? Now we have, it's like this. I'll pull you down here so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing again, okay? And you're just gonna peel that off. Now you see how your rhinestones stay right on there? Okay, so now we, for this one anyway, we have a second piece, um, a second part of the template, which they, they, the designer for this one created separately basically to make it easy if you wanted to do two different colors. I just did the same color. Um, so I'm gonna pick that up now, okay? Same thing, you can use your little brush to get them on there if you want. And peel back. Now you can obviously see how you could use this template over and over and over again once you do it, which is nice because it's not the, the transfer, doing these rhinestone transfers is not the fastest thing. All right, so now I'm just gonna place this in here. Okay, and I'm gonna repress. Now, it's definitely important that you um, cover this because you've got exposed rhinestones, okay? So we'll press that. So go back over and I'll press it again. Okay, sorry if I'm blocking. Okay, all right. So like I said, you don't want too much pressure because too much pressure is gonna squeeze the glue out from around those rhinestones. Um, oops. Oh, my timer's not working for whatever reason. Okay, well, we'll just wait a few more seconds. All right. And we will pull that piece off of there again. Let me do that, sorry. See down here so you guys can see. Okay. This transfer, as I said, can be used again. So if you want, you can just place it right back on your on the um, sheet there so you don't waste it. So both pieces can be used again. All right. So that's how you're gonna make rhinestone uh, transfers. Okay. So again, if you want the full um, start to finish tutorial of like how you would take this from being a cut file to make, turn it into the rhinestone, uh, rhinestone lines or excuse me, circles so that you could, uh, create the template that is on the blog. And that, that blog post I linked to up top. If you don't see it, just go directly to silhouetteschoolblog.com and it will be, if you're watching today, which is September 13th, um, you'll be able to see it right at the top of the blog. Okay. All right, you guys, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. See you soon.